Well, I uh, <clears throat> got into this business in the 80s when I was uh, going to grad school in, in France and working on a, my project in the Middle East. So I was just, you know, looking at paleoclimates and it has nothing to do with CO2 then because it's all driven by other processes. <clears throat> but um, when I come to, you know, then I came to the University of Ottawa and uh, started teaching this course, Quaternary Geology, but I changed the title because of the media uh, presentation of this new global threat, CO2. So I changed it to uh, Quaternary Geology and Climate Change. And I brought the course from just looking at the Ice Age to looking at the Ice Age transition through the Holocene up to today <clears throat> to make that connection. So that, oh, am I, aren't I smart making this course current with what's happening today? <clears throat> and I, you know, I would read documents from the American Geophysical Union. They have a, a, a monthly newspaper called uh, EOS and they present science. And all the science that they were presenting was highly focused, I won't say biased yet at that time, but focused on these climate issues like melting Antarctic ice shelves. Um, and, then, and then that spawned articles in the newspaper, big crack, no joke, and things like that. And I would show this to my students and, well, oh, yeah, CO2 is driving or, or warming now. It's unprecedented and all the rest. <clears throat> and a colleague of mine, Ian Beiser, who had been studying, uh, I'll say, the Phanerozoic, which is the last 600 million years of climate through sea sediments, brachiopods, and isotopes. And he, his discoveries were absolutely remarkable. He is, today, Canada's foremost geoscientist in terms of citations, recognition, accolades, and all the rest. And uh, he says, Ian, you know, uh, water vapor is the big thing when it comes to greenhouse gases. And I, what? You know, I was just a kid, <laughs> just starting my career. And I started looking into uh, that and reading up more about it and the correlations <clears throat> and what's driving the greenhouse process and the lack of correlation with CO2. And you know, so from his insights and his uh, uh, making me aware of this, <clears throat> I started to dig down more on the science and truly found that CO2 was a minor player and much over-trumpeted greenhouse gas and, uh, and that it was misleading. And so I really became, uh, I'll say, a climate realist at that time and uh, started bringing that into my course. My course is mostly emphasizing the past, which uh, is not controversial. And I said we had our controversy, but what caused the Younger Dryas and things like that, different uh, glacial and interglacial epochs. But, uh, and it was an exciting time to be doing this work because that was when the ice core data was coming out from Antarctica. They'd been drilling down there in the 70s and 80s, and now we're getting ice cores and CO2 records that correlate with the temperature, and we're seeing the, uh, the correlation of CO2 with temperature, but the offset, and that you start to recognize, oh, hang on here now. So CO2 is not driving temperature back then, it's following temperature. <clears throat> and so what's happening today? Why is it driving temperature today? You know, it doesn't make sense now. It doesn't add up. So that's when I really started to change my view. And uh, I haven't changed back, uh, despite all the CBC <sighs> warnings of how we're you know, ruining the planet and we've got such limited time left. Well, I, I will say that I think what Friends of Science is doing is fantastic because there is no, <clears throat> uh, I shouldn't say no, but very little representation of climate realism. And there's a, you know, a, des a desperate group of, uh, you know, we're all here and there talking to each other, but uh, we're not so well organized as, uh, you know, the IPCC and uh, governments and Greenpeace and the World Wildlife, all these groups are so well funded. Who knows how, who knows where. And these groups don't care about the science. And the people I meet through Friends of Science 
promoting the science. And if anything, and, and our government, of course, came to power saying that we'll follow the science, but of course they don't. No, no government will. They'll use whatever information best supports their policies or their objectives. And uh, groups like Friends of Science are chipping away at that, promoting it. <clears throat> I think you just need more money. <laughs>